So you might be wondering why I'm sitting in a walk-in shower. Well, the reason why is this is easily my most favorite room in our home. My wife and I, we saved up our money to remodel this bathroom. It turned out phenomenal. And we have the opportunity for you today to see how to build your own walk-in shower. And it starts out with the shower pan. So today we're gonna to show you how to install the Weedy Ligno shower pan. It will make your walk-in shower base completely waterproof, so 100% waterproof. It's easy to install, so if you're a DIYer or a professional, you can definitely do this on your own. And here's the deal, walk-in showers are way safer than stepping over a bathtub or a curb shower in the morning. So if you're looking to build a walk-in shower, this is a great video to start with, all right? So let's dive into it right now. Today we're going to show you how to install the Weedy Fundo Ligno shower pan. They come in a lot of different configurations, but we're using a 48 by 48 inch by 3 quarter inch thick pan. What you need to do first is dry fit it over top your wood subfloor. That's what Steve is doing right here. He's going to mark out the position using a pencil and then pull the Ligno pan up off the floor and cut it or cut down the subfloor. So the way that you're gonna cut down the subfloor is one of two ways, either with a sawzall like Steve is showing you here, and he's just using a wood blade, a demo blade by Diablo, or you can use a circular saw. But the nice thing with the sawzall is you can use the blade to guide your cut along any two by fours. So he's just gonna cut out a small section, it's like a one foot by 48, 48 inch section then use a wonder bar or pry bar to pull up that small section of wood to expose the joist and he's going to use a bigger pry bar to do to do the exact same thing with the bigger portion of the, of the osb so here you go now all your joists are exposed pull any nails that are on top of them place a level on every single joist and also across the joist to make sure that they are level because the ligno won't drain properly if it's not the case. You can shave down joists if they're a little bit bowed up, or you can sister two by material to them to get them nice and level. Now, in this case, what Steve is doing is applying liquid nail to a two by four. He's going to place that two by four three quarters of an inch below the existing joist, the top of the joist. He's got a three quarter inch OSB template that he put on top of it, and he's tacking it in place. Now, the reason why he's doing this is we're going to be putting OSB or you can put plywood over top of those two by fours and in between the joist such that now you've got a night a subfloor that's three quarter inches below your subfloor within the rest of the bathroom so you can see all those two by fours are tacked to the joist now we're ready to install the OSB so Steve is going to slide the OSB underneath any existing 2x4 bases. We want the OSB underneath the existing framing because we're going to apply thin set to it, and you don't want the thin set to ooze out between the framing and the new OSB. Now, in this case, we're dealing with stairwell framing. We had to tack on more 2x4s, and then we're going to put the OSB on top of that. Now, Steve is going to apply liquid nail to it. I'm showing you this because you may run into this exact situation. You may not. But again, the reason why we're putting the OSB nice and tight to the framing is so the thin set won't ooze out in between those two joints. Now, if you've got drywall underneath the joist, so for example, a ceiling, you want to put in your plumbing first even before you put those nailers in. So get all your plumbing in place before you put the nailers in and before you attach the plywood to the nailers. Steve is applying liquid nail to all the nailers and then he's going to put his OSB on, on top of that and slide it underneath the 2 by framing and tack it in place using a nailer. You can also use decking screws and an impact driver to do this if you don't have a nailer. So what we're doing here is providing a really nice sound structural platform that is three-quarter of an inch below the existing wood subfloor, and we're going to put the ligno on top of that, which we're going to show you here shortly. But again, this is a nice, strong, structural base for the ligno. You're going to dry fit the ligno again, and then draw a hole marking the location of the drain, because the bottom of the ligno needs to fit down through that hole, so we need to cut a six and a half inch hole in the OSB here. So that's what Steve is doing. He's measuring out from center, from the center of that drain location, a six and a half inch hole. You pre-drill using a spade bit, and then you can cut that out using a jigsaw. 
And when you get done with it, you'll have a nice six and a half inch hole for the ligno to fit down through. And that's very, very important that you get this set up before you apply the thin set to the OSB. The next step is to attach tube by material to the back of your framing because we're going to be installing your plumbing. And what we're using here is a delta mixing valve. This is a roughing valve with integral stops. That's critical if you don't have shutoff valves. We're also going to have a diverter valve attached to that because that diverter valve is going to run plumbing to the shower head, to a handheld shower, and then also body sprays. So you want about 14 inches between your rough-in and that diverter valve to allow for enough space for the escutcheon. So the escutcheon will fit around that rough-in valve, and you want tile to be between the rough-in and the diverter. Now, in the case of a delta rough-in, you want the tube-by material to be flush with the back of your framing. That way, when you go to secure the rough-in valve to that tube-by material, the the rough end and the diverter will be flush with your half inch weedy that's going to be going on the wall and that will allow for a really good look when you put your tile onto the weedy. The Ligno shower pan by Weedy requires latex modified thin set. In this case, we're using Mopay's Carabon and Carelastic. The Carelastic is the latex additive. You need about a half a bag of the Carabon for a four by four foot shower pan. So that's what Steve is doing here. He's adding the Carabon to the Carelastic and mixing it up per the Mopay directions. Now, in this case, we're using a quarter inch by quarter inch square notch trowel. We're going to use that to embed the thin set onto the OSB. The first thing you want to do before installing the pan is to actually install the drain assembly. And what you need is uh, the weedy caulking that comes with it. This is actually a sausage um, container cartridge for a sausage gun. It just gives you about twice as much as a regular caulking gun, but uh, they do sell it in regular caulking tube forms. So the drain is pretty simple, pretty standard. It just has a slip ring. A tightening lock ring, a plastic o-ring, and then a rubber gasket at the bottom. So what you want to do is first apply some weedy caulking to where the drain piece is going to sit and be generous with it. Okay, and I, what I always do is just go around the inside of the, the, uh, the drain assembly as well just to make sure that there isn't any missing so you just sit this in place, and then around the back side, you put the rubber gasket on first, the plastic slip ring, and the locking nut. Now you don't need any pliers or wrenches or anything like that. This is all going to be just a stiff hand tightness to it. And then so that excess seal it, just seal out, just just wipe off. And that's all there is to it. So then we'll be able to thin set this pan in now that we got this in place. So since Weedy is a waterproof shower system, uh, you have to use all the components that go with it. So, and the weeding caulking, the Weedy waterproof caulking that is, uh, is specifically made for this product must be used, especially for the drain assembly and any joints that you use. The thing with this foam products is, is that you gotta be careful with not using any harsh chemicals, anything that's not basically used in the system. No liquid nail, no silicone, nothing like that. Just use the, the caulking. And this caulking is pretty amazing stuff. It's it has a, a real flexibility to it so it never completely hardens and that's why when you use it in the joints and the corners and stuff it's going to last forever and not not have any cracking always use the products that are within the system uh, that'll guarantee the waterproof system first thing now that we have the drain assembly put on you just want to dry fit this again and make sure this is going to fit in in the proper location before you go thin setting down because once you thin set this down especially the the ligno pan it gets very difficult to pull back up and because that thin set's really just suctioning this to the floor. So just dry fit it, make sure it fits. Make sure that drain is sitting down in correctly. Yeah, so there's no bounce, there's everything sitting flush on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and thin set this pan down. And what I always do is try to take a damp rag and wipe down the area that you're gonna be thin setting. 
And this kind of just kind of, this is on any stout, any towel installation or the plywood. Kind of just clear off the dust, moisten the plywood a little bit so that the thin set doesn't get dried out too quickly. Like I said, a quarter inch square notch trowel. And burn the thin set into the plywood. Do that first and then you'll, you'll notch it out. In this small space, we're gonna go ahead and back butter, back trowel our pan. Cause I'm not gonna have very much room to, to put this in prior after I do that. So we'll go ahead and back butter the pan. Whatever way you run your trial marks, run it the same way on the on the pan. The idea behind that is to allow the air to allow the ridges to collapse and remove any excess air. Okay, so we got that back buttered. Finish our pan here. adhesion on it and we're just since we have a little bit of a, a customary shower pan size with this back wall we're gonna go ahead and just make sure that that our back wall receives the, the half inch panel tightly so any uh any thin set that comes up through your dado joint here you want to wipe out clean around the pan and that's definitely going to happen if you have good thin set coverage so wipe that clean because you're going to be using that the weedy sealant and that sealant needs to seal to this foam so make sure all your edges are all clean after the pan it's thin set it down you want to put some weight on the uh, on the pan itself so extra pieces uh, piles of tile work pretty well for that for the first 30 minutes at least have some weight on there um, and then once you get some of these side panels in you'll be able to take them off so hopefully you saw how easy it is to use the weedy ligno shower pan now we're going to have a second video for you that's going to be a part two we're going to show you how to install the weedy building panels on your framing and that will make the walls in your walk-in shower 100 percent waterproof as well so if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up if you've got a question ask it down in the comment section if you're looking for more advanced training on how to remodel your bathroom you can check out bathroomrepairtutor.com so again you can go to bathroom bathroomrepairtutor.com to check out the advanced training for bathroom remodeling. That's where Steve and I also give support for DIYers who want to do a bathroom renovation on their own. So again, thanks so much for watching today's video. You can check out part two here soon on how to build your walk-in shower completely using the weedy building panels in the weedy ligno shower pan. All right. So again, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. I don't know about you, but the bathroom is one of the only places in my house where I can get some peace and solitude. Don't tell my family, this is where I hide.